So the next topic that we are going to discuss um, has something to do with uh, what was very striking uh, to us as a team when making this uh, MOOC. It is that whenever you talk about co-creation, uh, data are very important. So data is a very uh, broad category, of course, but we are producing uh, uh, certain knowledge um, and we are kind of uh, looking at the different groups that are involved in data production and use. So it's about um, both kind of measuring things, generating data, but it's also uh, adapting your behavior because you make use of certain data, for example, in terms of air pollution in your city. So data is in the center uh, and citizens uh, have been a very clear focus of this MOOC. That has been a conscious choice. Of course, companies are very important in generating data and city governments are using data. But in our uh, MOOC, more or less, we have been kind of doing it like this. So very much the citizens in the center, um, looking at the role of citizens in co-creating and using data uh, and the role of NGOs and especially scientific experts turned out to be very important. So I think uh, about 70% of the MOOC has been uh, uh, on this kind of uh, issues. So that's why we discuss um, now a little bit this uh, idea of citizens, data, scientists. Martin, do you think that's uh, something typical for environmental topics and problems that we end up talking data so easily? Yeah, I, 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 well, if, if I talk about uh, air quality, of course, uh, that's, that's something you can sometimes see, but uh, it turns out that it's, that it's very difficult to measure. So in Amsterdam, we have uh, a good system in place to measuring, for measuring the air quality. But in Kampala, for instance, it was completely unknown what the air quality was uh, until a group of scientists decided to measure in, in Kampala. So uh, data is vital to uh, at least quantify the problem. I think what we've seen in Amsterdam, so you say some data is not being generated in Kampala, there's a good system in place in Amsterdam, but in the freshness of water project we've seen that actually their citizens can help to measure at moments which are rather difficult for the authorities. So although authorities measure already quite a lot about water quality, ensuring that it's safe to drink, yeah. it's really beneficial to also invite citizens and to help them out to monitor at moments which are rather difficult uh, no. for themselves, yeah. yeah. I, I think that uh, a similar thing is what we have seen also in, uh, um, in on air quality with Vaag Society, uh, that citizens want to know about uh, the air quality in their streets. Well, uh, the system, uh, so the measuring system uh, in Amsterdam might be very good, uh, but cannot measure um, a particular pollutants on a street level um, but yeah uh, I think there's still an issue with um, in between lay people and, and experts um, I think yes also with water that was a, an issue that came up for example is the data that is being generated can, is it trustworthy and yeah, do we know that the quality of the data is sufficient to Based decisions upon. Um, we've seen with the, the WOW platform that an important element was that citizens also uh, provide metadata huh, so that the experts who want to make use of the data also know that the data is being yeah, generated in the right conditions or in useful uh, measurement setup. Uh, so all these examples are we need data to know what to do next. So we want to make something more sustainable. Uh, and we need data for that. Um, this is something that experts uh, are well known about to generate, but uh, in some cases uh, citizens uh, as kind of fellow co-creators of data are very much needed and invited and encouraged. Um, could you also say that um, is this something that has recently uh, gained particular uh, emphasis and importance? Uh, can you tell Jot a little bit uh, why it is that everybody is talking about co-creating data at the moment, uh, even talking big data and this kind of stuff? Yeah, okay, yeah, of course big data is also a hot topic. 
and it's because recently or already for quite some time this is um, development going on of infrastructure of ICT it's becoming bigger and bigger and also all the possibilities with technology with sensors and uh, data collection for everyone on their phone everything has become so e so much easier oh. that this infrastructure for data collection has become available to a lot wider group of people aka all the citizens almost and it's actually true for a lot of examples that the power of numbers and therefore big data the power of numbers is is hugely important because as a expert you can have certain points where you measure maybe the heavy rainfall if you have citizens that walk around the city all the time you can cover almost yeah. every geographical point in yeah. every city yeah. so basically you, you are improving your knowledge your scientific knowledge about the city as a social social technical system by uh, using uh, or inviting citizens to co-generate data yeah I yeah, think but Martin, you are an, uh, an expert, of course, on, uh, on air quality and uh, measuring. And I wonder, uh, it all sounds so great uh, with all these citizens uh, collecting or developing all this uh, data, but how useful is that? Now, I think in general it's useful, but there's one big uh, danger, and that is the data quality. For instance, it's, for air quality, it's quite difficult to measure air quality in, in, a, in an accurate way and we always need engineers to, to uh, estimate the accuracy of, of the measurement and when uh, citizens start to collect data of poor quality and go to the government and, and the government says well this, this has not been done according to our protocol so, so you get this friction so, so the quality assurance of data is a very important issue, but I'm sure that in, in the future new sensors will appear, mm. uh, new systems will yeah. appear that, that allow citizens to, to measure their air quality in their street. In a more reliable way. In say. a more yeah. reliable way. And if you can make clear at some point that, that indeed this data is also useful for the citizens themselves in ways. So if you can explore these, these mutual bene benefits, yeah. let's say, then I think there will also be a lot more incentive for people to collect this data because they can use it themselves. Yeah. And data uh, gathering and use goes together with learning, with uh, discussion, with politics, uh, yes. like you said. It's yeah. kind of, there's n just, just working with data is not very exciting, but it's always data for. Data to uh, relate to other people, data to achieve certain ends, data to improve your city and your quality of life. Yeah. yeah, and then it's really, I think, the learning process for all the, the people involved. Yeah. Uh, not only for the experts, but also for the people participating. Yeah. So if that is becoming more and more important, like we all agree, do we end up having smart cities and smart citizens uh, and complete transparency, data all around? Um, so do we live in a data-saturated city environment? Annika, what is... Well, I think that uh, remains to be seen. Um, what it does uh, do is that it uh, raises also new uh, political questions related to data. Uh, for example, um, who actually owns the data that citizens generate? Um, how actionable is the data? We just discussed that it, it potentially has a lot of benefits for citizens as well as those who are uh, using and designing the, the systems at city level. Um, but measuring and generating data is not the same as uh, creating data that you can actually use and that is used in order to create uh, sustainable innovations. And there's also the issue that uh, Jota already mentioned that um, actually these uh, systems, these apps, these uh, digital infrastructures that are created are created by um, um, a specific group of experts and we do not yet see that much citizen participation in the creation of these digital systems. While we do see that these, uh, the, the socio-technical systems are increasingly being digitized in cities. Yeah. So there's clearly uh, also new issues yeah. uh, coming up. Yeah. But do I hear there are some um, warnings that um, too much emphasis on data and how important they are for sustainable cities, then you end up with more control uh, about everyday life of ordinary people? Not necessarily. Uh, it completely depends on how you uh, create also the, the digital systems of the future city. 
So that's uh, that's still open, and that's a new issue to be uh, explored, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But maybe we can uh, have a risk, at least, that um, solving all those environmental problems uh, and therefore installing all, all kinds of sensors and data uh, gathering systems, um, that indeed we get more social um, uh, urban issues instead. Yeah, new social issues, you mean. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good for a better uh, air quality and water quality, but it uh, brings all kind of additional information about the behavior of citizens for city governments, for companies, and perhaps then we should be aware of these side effects that come with the kind of the good thing of working towards more sustainability. It could be in the end uh, a new kind of uh, control system for citizens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I think this is a, um, a very nice uh, kind of review of the centrality of data in uh, our uh, MOOC. Um, we have kind of really emphasized that uh, data are prominent because we talk sustainability transitions. Uh, and we said data are always generated in a social relation between citizens and other stakeholders. And of course, we have to be aware of not just the positive side of citizen science, but also some of the negative sides of them. Thank you. Yeah.